I, I, I would imagine that this is story will never go away. You're the only Tiger pitcher I know in history to pitch a 28-out ball game. But let's go back 10 years ago to the perfect game that never was. Uh, and, and I guess, first of all, I want to clear something up. When it first was reported, you did not petition the league or do anything to try to get the outcome restored that you pitched a perfect game. Someone asked you a question and you said, if baseball changes it, I'm all for it. But this isn't something that you're seeking to do on a personal level. Correct. 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 I may be put in my position. Maybe it was my fault because we're talking about, see, they give me the perfect game. So my little will consider that. I was like, yes, I'd be happy for See, they do it that, of course, I'm happy. Why not? But it's nothing uh, they're putting a letter or trying to replace the team or trying to change the history. I'm really happy where everything will come. Uh, Ten years later, actually, we're talking about it right now. And I got a good test in my mouth because um the the way me and Gene we handle us some teams and uh that was part of the story that was the dynamic that we live in that point and we respect it i wouldn't change it you know let's go back to that game in in the ninth inning i'm sure virtually every tigers fan every baseball fan that's aware of it can pro- probably comes up to you and says i you know what i was doing on that night when i was listening to it i guess what i want to do is go back to that ninth inning mark Grunzelanek comes up, first pitch fastball, he tags it. Austin Jackson makes an incredible over-the-shoulder Willie Mays type of catch. At that (laughs) point, are you thinking, okay, this is actually going to happen? That was the difference about that game to the other games. The confident level they got between the 7, 8, and 9 inning, it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, do you ever see it? This is a good point because you mentioned about Austin Jackson catch the ball, and you can see I was smiling. Uh, that actually loosed me up. That was like, hey, my guys is going to catch every single ball. I know it was a game that's going too fast the way you say. That was, again, a lot of ground balls. There's not too many pitches. These guys, are not, it's not too many. A strikeout, neither. That was these guys coming aggressive and swing the bat. So I was, the confidence they got for my guys is like, they're going to get it every ball you know they're gonna get every out they all these guys that reacted brandon each make a great play it crumbled touch my ankle and it, brandon each get in and getting out so they're in a really good position and um they actually that play in a specific it lose me like lose me up i was smiling at that time i don't feel any pressure I, obviously i was excited my heart was you know raised a little bit more than normal but i was like you know believing so much all these guys that got behind me oh so you get the next out you're feeling good you know your guys are there jason donald gets up ground ball kind of an odd play we've seen it so many times where the second baseman looks like he can make the play in this case carlos guillen uh miguel who's a great fielder i i underrated portion of his game makes the play you're trying to beat the runner to the base. Donald's on record saying he's trying to beat you. Take us through that play. What's going through your mind? As you know, I'm on the verge of baseball history. Well, and, and, and this moment, everybody's aware of what everything happened. We got one more out to, to finish this. And uh, all the stadium, all the fans, the, you know, sharing, everybody staying up. Um, and everybody, everybody want to execute the last out. Everybody's in play, everybody's in position. Uh, soon the ground ball get it. I was running hard as I can to first base. Everybody know what happened. When Gene Joy is called safe, it was when I was in shock. Um, it was a ground ball that was not easy because the ground ball and the TV, you don't see it. That was, it was more like a slow, like a Jojo ground ball. The ball is going like mm-hmm. this. So, so Miguel go execute the, the ball really good and throw it to me. Um, everybody know what happened. Cole says, I was in shock. My first reaction, I was putting my hands, you know, like a celebrate. Miguel, I can see Miguel celebrate. I see Carlos Guillem jumping. I see everybody's jumping. And when that happened, and 
the way to go to the mound again, it was when I started doubting myself. I was not running enough. I was, don't beat me. I don't touch the base. I bubble the ball. What just happened? So I lost all my focus in that point, And I would start doubting why we was safe. And, um, you know, everybody after that, I saw the replace, but I was not watching at this point. Yeah, you know what I found really curious about that is that you were able, though, to channel it and get the last out. So many times when we see something like that or a no-hitter, in this case, a perfect game is broken up, we see, you know, the next team gets a couple of hits. Maybe they even score a couple of runs because you're so disappointed. How were you able to keep it together? 100% luck. It was my day, and this moment I was no focus anymore. I was I was trying to hear what Migi Migi and Gene Joyce the back and forth because Migi was telling about what you call safe. What what, what was the problem? So they have an old discussion in my ear. I was listening to them. I'm an auto zone throwing the baseball, and I was putting myself in a stretch for a couple of seconds, and I don't feel comfortable. And Donald. It was the run in first base. He stole second base and get to second base. He stole third base. And I still in my wind up. My, my concentration that was going at this point, almost like automatic throwing the ball. I got really lucky get a ground ball to Brandon Inch and was finished the game. At this point, my head, my concentration that was going, I was thinking about what just happened in, in, in this particular, like, I feel like it was out. It was my first reaction, the way I said before, but I was start doubting too much myself what just happened. After the game, everything kind of blows up. Jim Joyce obviously knows he blows the call. You actually, after this game, go and talk to Jim Joyce. What was that, what was that like for you? It, it is really simple. It, uh, people I don't know the, that, that talk to Jim Joyce the same night. It's the way you say, I went to his locker after a couple hours, and our clue house, and I went to his clue house and talked to, and I, and I see a guy that he's like, you know, feel sorry for him. He take it so proud, he's professional. He's really professional. And he's telling me, hey, Armando, I'm sorry. I was trying to do my best. Um, he was trying to explain me everything. At the same time, he got a lot of pressure for the media. He got a lot of pressure for reporters, and major league baseball had to need an explanation why he goes safe. He feel terrible because what just happened. So I put him in my position and put him in his shoes. I don't put him in my position. And in and, and this po in this particular moment, I was going to say anything negative. This one, you see a guy and he's crying. He feel terrible. And you're going to try to like, he go and pull him down. It, it, it is, it's, it, it's impossible really to do that. You, you feel sorry for him because you cannot dictate a guy that spent 25 years as an umpire in the big list and did dictate for a couple of seconds he make a bad call. Everybody make a mistake. And it was an innocent mistake. He thought it was safe in the beginning. He realized later there was a mistake, but he actually twisted. He's like, hey, you know what? Had to be a, a, a better man is like, hey man, I'm sorry, I apologize, I, I, I make a horrible mistake. And in this particular moment, we kind of kill all these negative things that people say is to like, how can we focus about the solution, not the problem? How we can make a better story? And that point, we don't know the story is going to be so big. So we was trying in this moment, it's like, hey, you know what? Let's move forward, let's go see if we can change it. But let's, you know, let's not going to point each other. Or oh, you do this or you should do that. Let's go focus about actually give you a good message. And we go from there is when I, I come back to the glue house and I talk to a couple of reporters and I was saying that, you know, nobody's perfect. People make a mistake. Yeah, I, I, I really commend you on that. I, I really, really do. I, I think it's one of the greatest moments in reaction by an athlete in sports history. I mean, I, I can't tell you how inspiring you were the moment that this happened. And then the next day to go out and have the lineup card, 
I mean, I'm, you know, again, which could have been a bad situation because fans are there. It's a day game. The turnover was very, very quickly. It's at this point the talk of the nation. Uh, and, and when you go out there and put your arm around him, I think Jim Joyce and all that, um, what was that moment like for you? Besides, you also got a Corvette out of the deal. Well, and and this point, it was Gene Leland also ideal. Gene Leland, it kind of like, it was his ideal because he know it was an early game and it was a lot of people already outside the stadium. So Gene Leland get close to me and say, Armando, let's go with Gene Joyce. You know, the way Detroit Tigers stadium is the umpires go to the tunnel behind the home plate. So a lot of people can reach to him really close. So when when he go to that tunnel, I wanted you go outside to the field so people start cheering you, start booing him. So we actually we execute that way, and um, we only have to look in the shadow because we already talked to the night before, and and we we know that we're gonna try to do, you know, support each other. And that point, I was trying to support each other. It started like poison fingers. So I went to the field. He went. The people saw me. They started sharing from me and forget about the point. So, again, we're trying to do the best in, in the moment. So we need to look in our, our eyes and we know we pass. Do you still keep in contact with Jim Joyce? Or, or, or did this did a friendship develop? Do you have much contact with him? I, I talk to um, – it's not like we are best friends, but we make a book together. It's called Nobody Perfect. Uh, right. We actually do the we do that a commentary with uh, Fox Sport like four months ago, and um, we um, obvious reason is no baseball uh, so far and everything happened. But we're supposed to we go to Detroit to get some uh, signed books and we're gonna get a couple events uh, over there in Detroit. So yes, when I saw him in the ESPYS, I met his wife, and you know what? I, I got a lot of respect for that guy. He, I know he has a lot of respect for you, and I think he's grateful by the way you've handled yourself and conducted. And and uh, I'm kind of curious, though. You did get that Corvette, and you still have that car to this day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and I, were, are you surprised at how big this story became, how this is part of the American sports fabric is – the perfect game that wasn't quite perfect. Well, I, I was surprised, completely surprised. In that time, we don't have that social media that we have right now. I started noticing because my phone is st stopped no ringing. I was 24 seven, my phone ringing, my phone ringing, my phone ringing. I was, and the papers in Venezuela was blowing. And, and, and I can see it, the story is getting bigger and bigger. But for me, to this point, it's like, let me let me put some positive message. And it's exactly the same that we're doing right now. Ten years later, um, before I go to that, uh, in that point when we do the book, I see Gene Joyce doing, uh, take the money, the revenue he got from the money for the book and put in money in foundations to help people. And, and, and I saw that. And so I, I, I put in myself the, all these years, they, every time that we go too close to that, I get more attention to it, trying to get the revenue they got and, and mm -hmm. do a foundation to help people. And, and, and actually, it's coming a bless to me. This year, it's obvious we cannot go to Detroit because obvious reason what happened with the coronavirus. And, uh, and I was trying, like, we're talking about seven months ago that we're going to do Hope Foundation in Venezuela because they're having a really hard time. And I make these teachers... And this is a blue and white, and the back is like this. And it's to say, what is your call? And I will sell this t-shirt for foundation to help Venezuela. They really have a hard time. And I'm doing this because this is opportunity that I got to start repeating myself also to help people because this is when I got attention for like one week or two weeks. And after that, coming a normal ex-baseball player. Well, certainly you have taken what could be a very big negative in your life and turned it into a positive. I know, as you said, you're helping out Venezuela, the Galarraga Baseball Academy. You're selling the shirts. Uh, I, I, I'm definitely going to get one. I, I promise you that. But you're also helping youth baseball 
also in Texas. Can you talk a little bit about what your life is like right now? I got a baseball academy in, um, and uh, I create a pitching online program. It's armandogalarraga.com. And I just, you know, hope of these kids like go outside, pitching, throw the ball. Uh, I do remember so much go, don't be too much in the technology. I wanted these kids to go outside and share and control their feelings. Like how they can play as a team, how you can control your feelings when they stop, don't go your way. How can you support your team in when he got an actually bad day? So that communication, that that in you know the human being has to be give you more love, and 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 a sport they give you too much tools, and we're losing a little bit that because it's a lot of people on the computers and their phone and the tablet, and and we lost them to be outside, and this dynamic, this coronavirus actually putting more people close, and and actually more longer for far now to to take more clothes and the human being has to be more close it has to be more tight than ever and and, and to have that academy i'm joining these kids smiling i'm joining these kids to learn some teams different they don't learn in the computer you know i i've got to tell you this i i think that your message resonates with everybody I mean, you are just a decent guy, and I, I mean that truly. From the way you reacted to what happened to you on the field, I mean, it's a baseball game. Certainly, it's important. Uh, you know, it would have been the first perfect game in Detroit Tiger history. Trust me, I know that. But what you have been able to do, I can't tell you, as a native Detroiter and a lifelong Tiger fan, how proud I feel that a man like you wore the Detroit uniform, Armando. I truly mean that. I mean, you are a very special person, and I think what you've done is outstanding, absolutely outstanding. Well, thank truly. you, thank you, thank you. And, and and I get that also for Detroit City. I remember 2008, Detroit had a hard moment in downtown. The people sell and close the business like crazy because the economy that was down. And you see the Detroit downtown they have a hard time and, and people start getting together. The big companies started getting together to invest in downtown because they're proud to be in Detroit. They don't want people leave all side. So want to be people in Detroit and they start investing little by little to get better. How can we can push Detroit to all this talent, all these people right here, they're good at putting together a really beautiful downtown. If they were to give you the perfect game, what you absolutely earned on the field, what would it mean to you, or at this point, everything that you've done and accomplished since that point, would it mean that much to you? I, I, I would be really happy. I'm going to be honest with you. I'd be like, mm -hmm. yes, you know. <laughs> but but I got a really good test in my mouth because I hope to baseball have it replaced now. Like I contribute. It's not only my place. It's really it's not trying to be like an angel. Just to like, it's not only my plane, there has to be changes. It's a dynamic at that point, we have to respect it. All these places are really important that some people make a mistake. I'm really happy to use my name and using my, you know, my play, what happened to me, to they don't happen to the, this generation and the future generation, to the future players, they're going to happen. They're going to make it really something in history. And for human, we make a mistake and, and, and they don't be in the books. In Spanish, it's like, lo más bonito de la historia es la huella que tú dejas en el presente. The beauty of the history is what you leave it with the present. You know, Armando, I could talk to you all day. I really could. I, I completely uh, have enjoyed this conversation. As I said, you're inspiring. You're a great young man. I wish you nothing but success uh, on the Galarraga Baseball Academy. I hope that, you know, uh, things go well in Venezuela. And uh, things uh, go well for you, you, baseball, very much. Thank you very, very much.